these are the families of functions that you learned about in Algebra 2 Trig, at least some of them. You probably know more. So why are we talking about them right now? In math, the way that you understand complicated phenomena is by understanding how simple elements can get combined to produce the more complicated thing. Here the waving is just a combination of a bunch of simple circular motions. This was a visual example, but the metaphor will apply more generally to all the material in our course. Last year, maybe understanding the x squared function was a goal in itself. In this course, you want that to become the building block that you'll use to combine with other basic functions and other basic ideas to produce more interesting and more complicated phenomena. So sometimes when I ask students, do you know the shapes of the basic families of functions? They say, yeah, of course. And so I say, all right, graph me x squared and x to the fourth. And they say, okay, x squared looks like this. x to the fourth looks like this. That's their rough sketch. That kind of imprecise understanding was probably fine for what you needed to use those functions for last year. But the difference between x squared and x to the fourth is actually, there are a lot of differences and they're, they're pretty important depending on the kind of application that you want to use them for. So the other opposite way that you can go wrong in thinking about these functions is doing this kind of thing. I ask students to graph a function and they very carefully plot lots of points and like great attention to detail and the end product looks beautiful. But the problem with this is it doesn't emphasize what's important about the function. Um, it's very precise, but it's equally precise about every aspect of the function. And that's not usually very helpful in thinking about functions either. So what I really want you to develop is a more detailed mental picture of the shape of each of these families and understanding what some of their key features are and how they relate to other members of the families of functions. So x squared, you've got that. If you superimpose x to the fourth, you'll notice that the x to the fourth graph looks a little squarer in the interval from negative one to one um, in a way that's sort of vaguely stated right now, but we'll see in a second. And the other thing I'm noticing is that they both go through the point one, one. Um, a neat thing you can do in Desmos that you might not have known about is you can make a list. So you already know that you can have a slider where the slider goes from, let's say, two to 10 in step size two. And so then you can drag it and see, aha, as the powers get higher, indeed we do get squarer. Um, but you can visualize all these at once by making n a list like this. So uh, let's say two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, like that. And so now we're graphing x to the n for each of these powers of n. And so you can really compare and contrast the functions so that you see that this one on the top is x squared. And as the exponent gets larger for even powers, um, the growth is much slower in the interval from zero to one. And you can see that because each of these curves is underneath the previous one. But then of course, when X is, whoa, whoa. But then of course, when X is larger than one, um, the curves, uh, the functions with the higher exponent grow much faster. So this mental picture would be a more nuanced understanding of the family of functions that are even powers. So at the beginning of next class, I'll ask you several questions that look like this. Please draw me a rough sketch of all of these functions on the same set of axes. And this is what I'd like you to do. Realize what the key features are and draw a somewhat careful sketch, but one that really reveals some of the key features. So that's the F function. That would be the G function. And then the H function would grow very, very quickly after one. Oops. So that didn't take too long, but it reveals the more detailed understanding.